Before we look at algebraic fractions, let's just take a, a, way, uh, a quick look at the way that normal fractions work, because it's all the same uh, techniques, except, except it's just with letters instead of numbers. Now, we need to have um, the, a common denominator when we're adding fractions. So the first technique you need to take, uh, or to be aware of, to take attention to, pay attention to, is the idea of multiplying a fraction by 1 and getting an equivalent fraction. So 4 fifths I've multiplied by 3 over 3. Now 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I've multiplied 4 fifths by 1. I've not changed the magnitude or the size of that number in any way. Um, I've done the same uh, but multiplied two-thirds by 5 over 5, so I've multiplied it by 1, I've not changed the size of the fraction, but I'm going to get equivalent fractions. So 10 fifteenths and 12 fifteenths. And 10 fifteenths plus 12 fifteenths is the same as 10 plus 12 over 15, so that's 22 over 15. Now we can convert that into a mixed number or, or whatever we want, um, if we want to, but really it's just that process of multiplying by one that I was interested, there, interested in there, and then just kind of following that through um, by adding the, the numerators together. The next technique is multiplying through by something. Um, so multiplying every single term on both sides of an equation by a number, we are actually changing the magnitude of the numbers themselves. But so long as we're consistent, we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, then the equals will still be valid. So this is different to the previous one, and uh, sometimes the, the two techniques get a bit confused. So because I've got a third as my denominator here, um, I'm going to multiply everything through by three so that I can cancel out that um, num numerator and denominator there to just leave me with x uh, not in a fraction form. And of course because I've multiplied everything, all the other terms by 3, um, the actual numbers are going to be different but the equation will still hold. So just simplifying those, 2 times 3 is 6, 5 times 3 is 15 and just then subtracting 6 from both sides of my equation I've got x equals 9. So that's our second technique then, the idea of multiplying every term in an equation by a particular number is not the same as multiplying by 1, multiplying the same on the numerator and the denominator. And just very quickly before we actually go on to the algebra then, normal um, fraction rules apply. So this is equal to this. Um, a divide turns into a multiply and then we flip the second fraction. That's as true with algebra as it is with numbers. So that's 10 twelfths or 5 6 by doing a bit of cancelling. And speaking of cancelling, 2 plus 5 over 3 plus 5, well, that's equal to 2 plus 5 is 7, and 3 plus 5 is 8. It is 8. So that's 7 eighths. Now probably the most common mistake that people make when they're working with algebraic fractions, or even any other kind of fractions, is to try to cancel off the plus 5 from the top and the bottom which would leave us with two-thirds. Obviously, two-thirds is not the same as seven-eighths. This is totally wrong. You can't cancel off when you're just adding um, a term. You can only cancel when you've got two terms multiplied together. So if that was two times five over three times five, if we've got the multiply sign in here, then we're able to cancel those terms off, but not if it's just adding. So looking at algebraic fractions then, the key is factorise wherever you can. Okay, so let's factorise the numerator first. So we're looking for two sets of brackets that multiply together to give us that quadratic. Two numbers that multiply together to give 10. Add together to give 7. That's obviously 5 and 2. Oops, x plus 2. Um, so when I multiply x plus 5 by x plus 2, I would get x squared plus 7x plus 10. Looking at the denominator, I'm looking for numbers that multiply together to give minus 6 and add together to give minus 1. So we're looking at x minus 3 and x plus 2. Now, as we were saying in our previous um, uh, bit of the video, uh, when terms are multiplied together, we can then start thinking about cancelling them out. So really, I've got x plus 5 times x plus 2, and I've got x minus 3 times x plus 2. So I've got x plus 2 on the top and the multiply, and I've got x plus 2 on the bottom and the multiply, so they can cancel out. So you can see that uh, in algebraic fractions, the skill of factorization of quadratics is going to be useful. 
Let's look at another slightly harder example, and the key to this is be methodical. Number one, factorise wherever you can, and number two, think of the normal rules of fraction, multiplication, addition, division, and subtraction. So step one then, factorise. So I've got, uh, for my first fraction, I've got x plus 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 4 times x plus 5, and this whole thing is divided by the fraction x plus 4 times x plus 1 over x plus 5 over x minus 2. So before I try and cancel anything down, I need to deal with this, convert that into a multiply. So there we are, I've converted the multiply and um, flipped the second fraction. Now because everything on that top row is multiplied together, we've got a multiply sign in here, we've got a multiply sign in here, it's every, all four um, of those sets of brackets are going to be multiplied together on the top, and all four sets of brackets are going to be multiplied together on the bottom. So if I've got any brackets that will cancel out, common brackets to the top and bottom, I can do so now. Well, I've got an x plus 1 up here, and I've got an x plus 1 down here. Um, I've got an x, uh, that's about the only one, I think. Oh, x plus 5 and x plus 5, they're going to cancel out. So that gives me x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x plus 4 times x plus 4. Well, x plus 4 times x plus 4 is x plus 4 squared. And up here, we've got the difference of two squares. Um, so we've got x squared minus 4. Um, and there's our, our final answer. So on this example, x squared minus 16 over x plus 4, obviously, first of all, we're looking to factorise, and we should get used to spotting the difference of two squares up here. And it's worth bracketing together the denominator because obviously we're not going to be able to cancel off just the x or just the 4. Those two terms belong together. And when we do that, we can quickly recognise that we've got x plus 4 times x minus 4 on the top. So that one is going to cancel with that one and just leave us with an answer of x minus 4 because obviously that's x minus 4 times 1 over 1. That is just x minus 4. So in our final example, um, we need to use our other technique. So we're not going to be multiplying the top and the bottom of individual terms in our um, equation here. Because the whole thing's an equation, I can multiply the whole each term individually just by one of these uh, denominators. So if I multiply everything through, first of all, by x plus 3, the effect of that is I've now got x plus 2 in my first term. I'm multiplying by x plus 3 and dividing by x plus 3, so those two things cancel each other out. They're uh, opposite operations. And then I'm going to multiply through by my other denominator, x minus 3. So multiply that term by x minus 3, multiply this term by x minus 3, and multiply this term by x minus 3. Uh, and the effect of that is I've got 5 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. Those two things are going to cancel out. So notice I haven't um, multiplied out any brackets just yet. It's always a good idea to hang on uh, a while just to see if anything cancels out. Um, in addition to what you're trying to get to cancel out, those, uh, those denominators, uh, nothing's done so. So uh, now it's time to multiply out the brackets. So multiplying out the first two brackets together there, I get x squared minus x minus 6. And now I've got to multiply out the second bracket, and I've got to be really careful of this sign here. I've got negative 5 times x, which gives me negative 5x, and negative 5 times positive 3, which gives me negative 15. Now we collect like terms. So x squared minus 6x minus 21 is equal to 0. And that one's not going to factorise uh, very easily. Uh, well, in fact, it's not going to factorise at all. So I could either use completing the square, or I could use um, the quadratic formula to work out what value of x is going to satisfy that equation. And I'm going to use the, yeah, as we said, the, the quadratic equation here. Um, write all those terms down. So that was the a, there was the b, here's the c. Um, put that all in there, and we get two answers when we simplify that all down. So I've got x is 8.48, or x is minus 2.48. Um, the key thing that I wanted to get across in that final example was that when we're solving these equations um, here, um, there's not much point in um, multiplying top and bottom by the same thing and just you know, getting equivalent fractions. What we need to do is actually obliterate those fractions altogether. So let's get rid of the denominators, which means we have to multiply through by something, change the values of the numbers. So the individual terms are changing their values, 
but the overall equation is staying the same so long as we do the same thing to every term in that equation.